So the battle of Sifin, it came to an end. Intahad Ma'arakatu Sifin. The battle of Sifin, it came to an end. And it finished with Bittahkim. What does Tahkim mean? أي توقفوا عن القتال بأن رفعت المصاحف على الرماح. The battle of Sifin it came to an end by the side of Muawiyah. They lifted the mushaf with their spears. They lifted it up in the air, and they said that we want a the kitab and the sunnah to judge us. The kitab and the sunnah to be our our source of judging. And Ali ibn Abi Talib, being the noble companion he was, he was pleased with the tahkim, the kitab and the sunnah, to be the judge. Um, so the army of Muawiyah went back to, um, back to Sham, and so did Muawiyah. And Ali ibn Abi Talib and his army, they went back to Kufa. And they all went back on the grounds that there's going to be a tahkim, a judge is going to take place. And it took place in the month of Ramadan. Muawiyah, he sent Amr ibn al-As and Ali ibn Abi Talib, he sent Aba Musa al-Ash'ari. And both of them became the, the representative of the other. So Aba Musa al-Ash'ari, he was a representative on behalf of who? Abu Musa al-Ash'ari was the representative of um, Ali ibn Abi Talib and Amr ibn al-As was the representative of Muawiyah. And the well-known uh, story of Qissa al-Tahkim took place, which in reality, this story, many uh, places or many pla in books you read, you will find that it has been what? Um, it lies and forgery and false reality, false things that are mentioned in the story, which are baseless. And the reason why it's weak is because in the chain of narration of all of those narrations, you will find a man by the name of Abu Mikhnifin. Abu Mikhnif. He's the one who mentions all these stories and he's not a reliable person. He is not a reliable individual. The way the people of Haq narrated it is as it took. And it was, in summary, that um, Amr ibn al-As and Abi Musa al-Ash'ari both met one another. And they said, uh, Abu, Amr ibn al-As said to Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, مَا تَرَى فِي هَذَا الْأَمْرِ What do you think should take place? What do you think should do? we should do? In regards to the bloodshed that took place, in regards to the, the position the uh, two groups are standing, what do you think we should do? Abu Musa al-Ash'ari replied to Amr ibn al-As's question and he said, Ara, I see. Annahu min al-nafar alladhi tuwfiya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa huwa radin anhum. That Ali ibn Abi Talib is an individual. The Prophet died and he was pleased with him. He was a, he's a person who when the Prophet died and he went to his grave, he left Ali and he was pleased with him. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari that's what he said. Amr ibn al-As, he looked at um, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. And he said to him, فَأَيْنَ تَجْعَلُنِي أَنَا وَمُعَاوِيَةً If that's what you said about Ali ibn Abi Talib, which in reality Abu, uh, Amr ibn al-As acknowledges that Ali is righteous, and he doesn't question it. But he said, where do you place me and Muawiyah? What do you think we need to do? Abu Musa al-Ash'ari said, إِنْ يَسْتَعِنْ بِكُمَا فَفِيكُمَا الْمَعُونَةِ وَإِنْ يَسْتَغْنِ عَنْكُمَا فَطَالَ مَسْتَغْنَى أَمْرُ اللَّهِ عَنْكُمَا He said if he uses you and he utilizes both of you in his affairs, then inshaAllah ta'ala in you two he will find something from. You two are two people who help and aid will be found in. I mean you're good people to aid him. وَإِنْ يَسْتَغْنِ And if Ali chooses that he doesn't need you both, and he suffices himself elsewhere. He finds his needs elsewhere. Uh, a lot has Allah's affairs 
being sufficient for both of you. When Abu Musa al-Ash'ari said that eloquent statement of his, Amr ibn al-As said, then Abu Musa, you're right. You're right. But the other stories that you may see elsewhere, which people write, even some people who don't know the reality of looking at the narrations of what took place, they narrate other stories that took place where Amr ibn al-As deceived Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and he got him and then let. Other narrations are weak. And in their chain of narration, as I said, Abu Mikhnif, who is not just weak, he's a liar. Kadhab, he's a liar. He's weak. And in the other narration, huh, which Abu Mikhnif al kadhab is in there, it portrays Amr ibn al-As as what? As a deceitful person. And Amr ibn al-As is who? He is Sahabiyun Jalilun Hajara Taw'ala Karhan. He's a Sahabi, you noble companion who migrated from Mecca to Medina. He's an individual who is from the Muhajireen, um, who the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praised him by saying, Ibn al-As, Mu'minani Amrun wa Hisham. The Messenger said, Amr ibn al-As and his brother Hisham ibn al-As, both of them are believers, they're Mu'min. The Prophet affirmed that for them, Imam Muhammad narrated in his Musnad. So it portrays him as a deceitful individual, which he is far from it. And it also portrays Abu Musa al-Ash'ari as a dim-witted person who doesn't know anything, who can be easily deceived, and that is also um, criticizing a noble, knowledgeable, smart companion like Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. After the battle of Ma'arakat al-Sifin took place, and the Sahabas, they came to Qadiyat al tahkim and the issue got solved. A f group, a group well known as the Khawarij, weren't pleased with what Ali and Abu Musa al uh, Ali and Muawiyah did. They did not like what Ali and Muawiyah did. They were not pleased with it. So when the year was 38 Hijriyah, Ma'arakatu al Nahrawan took place. And the story to it is as follows, and I would, I'm trying, inshallah ta'ala, not to go into too much details, because our uh, uh, mentioning of this story is to stick with the Shia and their story. But it comes in, so we have to quickly go over it. Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu ta'ala, and who came from Sifin, and the Qadiyat al Tahkim took place, and Muawiyah also came back from Sifin, and Qadiyat al Tahkim took place. The Khawarij were not happy with Qadiyat al tahkim They weren't happy with what Abu Mu uh, Muawiyah and Ali did. They thought and they saw it as what? Judging by other than that which Allah set down. And so they started to say amongst themselves, لا حكم إلا لله The judge is only for Allah. And they started to cause a lot of problem to who? Ali ibn Abi Talib in Iraq, in Kufa. They started to cause him a lot of... In the masjid they would stand up and they would start screaming whilst he's on the pulpit. They would scream and say, La hukma illa lillah. La hukma illa lillah. The judge is only for Allah. The judge is only for Allah. No one judges except Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala and who replies to them on the pulpit by saying, Kalima tu haqq. The word that you guys are saying, which is, La hukma illa lillah. The judge is only for Allah is a statement. It's words which are true. But the intent behind it, the objective behind it, it's batil, it's false. You guys want to say the judge is only for Allah, and based on that you want to spill the blood of all the Muslims. You want to what? And, and put every Muslim uh, in that camp of kufr. And yet you guys are the only Muslim in. So the word, la hukma illa lillah, is kalima haqq. We don't disagree. Like in the objective and the aim behind it, it is what? It is to spill the bloods of the Muslims. Ali ibn Abi Talib said to them, I, on the other hand, you guys can do what you guys will. And you guys can do what you see most befitting. As for I, Ali ibn Abi Talib, I will not fight with you guys. I will not cause you guys any harm. Of, and I will not do anything to you guys. 
and the spoils of war, the fate that I get, I will share it with you guys. This fate, which is the spoils of war in which I get from the disbelievers, when I get it, you guys are still Muslims, I will share it with you guys. As long as you do not spill blood. As long as you what? You do not spill blood and you do not cause any mischief in the city of Iraq. As long as you don't do that. So the Khawarij, they didn't listen to what Ali had told them. They didn't take his speech very serious. So they went and they killed a sahabi al-Jaleel, the honorable, the righteous sahabi, Abdullah ibn Khabbab. They went and they killed him. وَقَتَلُوا زَوْجَتَهَا and they killed his wife, وَبَقَرُوا بَطْنَهَا And they brought her stomach out, she was pregnant. She was what? She was pregnant and she was actually on the last trimester. She was on her ninth month. She was about to give birth. They were waiting for days before she gives birth. They went, they killed Abdullah ibn Khabbab ibn Arat. And وَقَتَلُوا زَوْجَتَهَا They killed his wife by opening her stomach and bringing out the child. When the matter reached Ali ibn Abi Talib, Ali sent an individual and he said, go find out who from amongst them killed Abdullah ibn Khabbab. Who is the one who did it? And bring me him and I will deal with him. So when that individual went to them in their camp, in their camp, what did he say to them? He said to them, Man who, who killed Abdullah ibn Khabbab? Who did the killing? Who slaughtered his, uh, him? And who also what? He, who, who also what? Who also brought out the stomach of his wife? Who did this? And you know, wallahi, how shaitan plays with people's minds. Wallahi, the way shaitan plays with people's minds. Whilst they were dragging Abdullah ibn Khabbab, and they wanted to slaughter him, and they wanted to cut his throat open, one of the khawarij, a date fell from a tree. And they were walking through somewhere. And that tree was owned by an individual. So what they did was, he took that date and he put it in his mouth, the Khariji that was with them. And so another Khariji looked at him and he said to him, Fear Allah, why are you eating a date that's not yours? This date that you're eating that fell off the tree is not yours. And you're putting into your system something that is haram. Fear Allah wa ta'ala. Abdullah ibn Khabbab, who is going to be killed, looked at them from the corner of his eye and he said to them, Shall I tell you something that is more sacred? Something that is more honorable than that date you just, he's, he just ate is my blood. How has shaitan shown you guys to get close to Allah by killing me? And this date, you see it as a big issue? Hakada shaitan. That is how shaitan plays with people's minds. Then when Ali ibn Abi Talib, he requested for the individual who killed, he requested for the individual who killed, Abdullah ibn Khabbab, they replied back to that per the messenger. They replied back to the messenger by saying to him, uh, All of us killed him. Each and every one of us in this camp, we all killed him. Ali ibn Abi Talib then said, These people, there is no way to stop them except to fight with them. فَخَرَجَ إِلَيْهِمْ عَلِيٌّ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنُهُ Ali came out on them. بِجَيْشٍ قِوَامُهُ عَشَرَةُ آلَافِ 10,000. The army was how much in number? It was 10,000. Ali killed them all in Nehrawan. That's the place he fought them with. <coughs> Ali ibn Abi Talib, he killed them and he got rid of them there. Um, from amongst the people, Ali ibn Abi Talib, when he fought against the Khawarij in that place, the, uh, the place of Nehrawan, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he started to walk within the army and he was looking for a man in which the Prophet prophesied. A man who was Dhu Thudayya. means he was a man whose arm was cut, whose at the bottom of his arm, there was a meat that the Prophet explained and described. The Prophet said, it's like the breast of a woman. His arm is cut and it's like the, bre it's the breast of the woman, a woman. The Messenger وسلم, he said, that he, that's the, khari, the Prophet described the Khawarij, even by their, the way they looked. When Ali saw him in, within the midst of the army, he showed the companions or those who were with him. 
pay attention. Ali ibn Abi Talib, when he fought against Muawiyah in the Ma'arakat al Safin, Ali walked with sorrow and sadness of what took place. And he felt pain and he wished Allah that he wasn't born this day. But when he killed the Khawarij, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he fell into prostration. Sujudu, 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 he fell into sujood shukr. Gratitude, Ya Rabb, I did what you wanted me to do. To kill these Khawarij. They don't deserve to live. They don't deserve to live. When the Battle of Nehrawan took place and matters cooled down, Hada'atil Umur, the matters came, a period of two years went by. And now at this point, the Khawarij felt, they got slapped, they realized they're weak. They are not equal to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali has in his midst a people who participated in the battles with the Prophet, who know what jihad is and how to fight. Khawarij don't know how to fight. They're only just based on emotions. So Ali ibn Abi Talib, when they realized that they are not equal to him, they can't fight with him, they felt sad. And they felt loss. But it also didn't leave them from sitting down every now and then to remind themselves of the people they lost that day. And the people who they lost in the battle with Ali ibn Abi Talib. One day, three Khawarij, they came together in Mecca. When they sat down amongst themselves, these three Khawarij, they came together to discuss what they are going to do in the upcoming future. And they all agreed upon to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by bringing three individuals to an end. Why? They said that the creations of Allah need to find ease for these, from these three disbelievers. This is their statement. وَذَٰلِكَ لِيُرِيحُ الْعِبَادَ مِنْهُمْ So the, the servants of Allah can find joy in this world. We need to bring these people to an end. The three individuals are as follows. One of them was Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim al Muradiyu. He said, I will deal with Ali ibn Abi Talib. Leave him to me. He's mine. I will get rid of him. Al Barku Tamimiyu. He said, Ana li Muawiyah. Leave Muawiyah for me. I will deal with him. And the third one was, It is Ibn, Bark, ibn Bakrin al Tamimiyu. Ibn Bakrin al Tamimiyu, he said, Ana li Amr ibn As. Amr ibn As is mine. Leave me to it. And they all agreed upon what? They all agreed that they're going to fulfill this mission, bring it to an end, uh, the, which day? On the 27th of Ramadan. They said on 27th of Ramadan, it's a night which is good. It is the night where some scholars mention that is Laylatul Qadr. We will bring Ali ibn Abi Talib, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, Amr ibn al-As, we will bring them all to an end. Amr ibn al-As was in Egypt. Muawiyah was in Sham and Ali was in Kufa. Those three places. Amr ibn al-As was in what? Fi Misr. He was in Egypt. Muawiyah was in Sham and Ali ibn Abi Talib was in Kufa. The only person who succeeded in his mission was who? Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim al-Muradi. The other two didn't succeed in this. Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim al-Muradi, he went... And he killed Ali ibn Abi, Abi Talib when Ali was going out for Fajr prayer. He took a, a blade or a dagger, more like, بِخِنْجَرٍ قَدْ سَمَّهُ أُسْبُوعًا One week he was putting poison on it. And he kept adding poison to it. For a whole week, making sure that the poison is stuck on the dagger. For a week, he was preparing it. And... He stood over Ali ibn Abi Talib and he put this dagger into him. And when he put the dagger into him, he said to him, he said to him, to Ali ibn Abi Talib, this what I am putting in you is for Allah. This is for Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. <coughs> and the rest is for what I find, the hate I have for you is why, I, why I'm doing it. Ali ibn Abi Talib, Straight away he died.
Ali ibn Abi Talib, before he died, when he won, when he, when he, uh, when Ali ibn Abi Talib got hit, he, Abdurrahman ibn Muljim left, but he got caught. He got caught straight away. Um, Ali ibn Abi Talib said, in, shaf, in shufitu, in shufitu, if I get better, فَأَنَا حَجِيدُهُ I am his, I will contest against him. وَإِنْ أَنَا مِتُّ But if I die, فَقْتُ لَهُ بِي Kill him for me. He was talking to who? His two sons, Hassan and Hussein. Abdurrahman ibn Muljim. He got caught. Um, and when he got caught, what they did was, they started to cut him in pieces. They, they, they cut, cut him in what? They started to cut him in pieces. Every part they were cutting. He didn't move, nor did he even twitch whilst they were cutting him up, until they got to his tongue, and then he cried. He screamed. And then they said to him, what, why are you screaming for? He said, I am scared that it's going to come a time where I'm going to live where I didn't remember Allah wa ta'ala. Meaning he was known for his excessive what? His excessive ibadah. So he's trying to say that I will what? I will? Uh, I don't want to spend a time where it just goes by and I didn't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, wallahi, hadha huwa al-dalal al-mubin. Wal-iyadu billah. That is clear-cut misguidance. He's yastabihu daman. He's making halal for himself. The blood of what? Waliyun min awliya illah. A wali, an ally from the allies of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. His blood is permissible for him. And then guess what he thinks to himself? Thumma yakhsha. Then he starts to fear what? And and he's scared of a moment where he's not going to remember Allah. But he's permitting for himself the blood of the willy of Allah. Ali is in Jannah. Ali is in Jannah right now as we speak. The messenger told us, alayhi salatu wasalam. Ali knew he was going to be in Jannah whilst walking on this earth. Um, the Barq, who was meant to kill what? And he was meant to kill Muawiyah. He went out for Salat al-Fajr. He hit him. But he wasn't able to kill him. So Muawiyah got hit, but he never killed him. Muawiyah was then cured. Um, he was cured, but it was mentioned that that wound that that man put to him was the cause of the death of who? It was the cause of the death of Muawiyah later when he died in his life. Um, <coughs> as for the one who wanted to kill who? The one who wanted to kill, the, kill Amr ibn al-As, he also went out to the prayer and Amr um, wasn't able to lead the Fajr prayer that day. He wasn't able to. And so what happened was, he put in, instead of himself, he placed in the Imamah, Kharija ibn Abi Habib. And when he sent out Kharija ibn Abi Habib, and that man came and he hit Kharija and he killed him in the Salah. They grabbed him. And when they grabbed him, they said to him, Mada fa'alta, what have you done? Um, so, <clears throat> um, he said, uh, they said to him, what did you want? Why, what, what have you done? And then he said, I wanted to make, I wanted to give the people joy from the existence of Amr ibn As. Arahtu nasa And I've done that. I have, mashallah, fulfilled my mission in getting rid of Amr ibn As. So he thought he still killed Amr ibn As. And then they said to him, ma qatalta Amr, wa inna ma qatalta kharija. You did not kill Amr ibn As. You killed who? Kharija. And then he said, he said, Aradtu Amran wa arad Allahu Kharija. He said, I wanted Amr and Allah wanted Kharija. And it became an Arab it became an Arab saying. The Arabs say when they do something wrong, if they do something and they wanted to do something else, but it turns out to be different to what they wanted, they would say, Aradtu Amran wa arad Allahu Kharija. It became what? It became a methalan shai'an, a famous uh, saying of the Arabs. فَقُتِلَ وَقُتِلَ الْبَرْقِ He was killed and Barq was killed. And Abdurrahman ibn Muljim was also killed. All three of them were killed. Um, Ikhwani, I need to elaborate on one thing. What was the reason why the Sahabas argued? We need to understand. Why did Zubayr, Talha ibn Ubaidillah, Zubayr ibn Awwam, Aisha, all of them go out? What was the reason for this? The reason was they wanted to get the people who killed Uthman, radiallahu ta'ala, 
anhu. They wanted to get the blood of the people who killed Amr. As for Muawiyah, as for Muawiyah, Muawiyah did not want in any way, form or shape, nor did he ever think of radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that, that which history has said to us, his khilaf between him and Ali was the well, it was a khilaful awlawiyat. That's it. Underline that word. Al awlawiyat. They were only arguing in the sequence of event, how it should take place. How, sh how should things be done? Good. Um, Ali ibn Abi Talib is now dead. So we need to talk about who took after Ali's death straight away. Ali, after his death, his son, Hassan ibn Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, took over. Hassan ibn Ali, he is um, the Prophet's grandson. And he is the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. He married, as we know, uh, are famous to us, um, of those he married, because Hassan was very known for his marriage. He used to marry so much, and he divorced a lot. He married so much. From his wives are known is Khawla bint Mandurin, Ummu Bishr bint Abi Mas'udin, Ummu Ishaq bint Talhata ibn Ubaidillahi. He married all of them. Those are the which ones are known to us. But he is very well known in history when you read his biography that he married over 70 women and he divorced them. Um, he also had a, ch a lot of children. Two girls is what he gave birth to, Umm al-Hassan and Umm Abdullah. His sons are Al-Hassan, Zaydun, Talha, Hussein, Abdullah, Abu Bakr, Abdurrahman, Al-Qasim, Amr, Muhammad. His virtues are a lot. From his virtues are that which the Prophet said about him, Ibnay hadha sayyidun, ibni hadha sayyidun, wa la'alla Allah an yuslih bihi bayna fi'atayni min al-Muslimin. The Prophet said about him that my son is a master, and Allah, inshallah, he will bring peace between two great armies. Allah will bring peace between them. So the Prophet said, two great Muslim armies, Allah will bring peace, peace between them because of my son. Because of my son, Hassan. And inshallah ta'ala, later we're going to see regarding what Hassan did. Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, Ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, Hassan ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, he died under the leadership of Muawiyah. Whilst Muawiyah was leading, he died the year 49. He died the 49th year of Hijriyah. Muawiyah, radiyallahu anhu, Muawiyah, um, his, 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 his Khilafah, Hassan stayed under it. What does that mean? This is the story that took place. Hassan ibn Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, after the death of his father Ali, the people of Kufa, the people of Kufa, they went and they gave bay'ah to the son of Ali. They went and they said, Hassan, you are our next leader. Um, when Hassan was given the bay'ah, and the people of Kufa actually gave him bay'ah, Hassan went to Sham. And who lived in Sham? Muawiyah lived in Sham. <coughs> and the people of Sham, the people of Sham, they didn't give bay'ah to Ali. They had no bay'ah towards Ali. So Hassan ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, he went to Sham. And the reason why he went was to bring peace between the Muslims. He wanted to unite the Ummah together. And everything to come under one, one leader. 